Hey guys, thanks for joining me for another Dokkan Battle video, and this is going to be part 4 of my beginner series. And what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to kind of review the event tab and talk about all of the different events in the game, talk about which events you should be focusing on early and what you should be doing there. And then I'm also going to talk about easy A's because those are also in the event tab and kind of explain what that process looks like for later on down the road when you can complete them. Um, you actually could start doing easy A's fairly early if you kind of follow follow my guidance on the six year anniversary, which I've kind of talked about here and there throughout all of these beginner videos. Um, my next video will be part five and that'll be the last one. Basically, I'm just gonna do an overall review of the main concepts I've talked about. And then I'm gonna talk about like summoning strategy and how you should handle your stones moving forward. Um, if you should choose to do that, obviously they would be your stones, you can spend them however you want, but I'm gonna give some advice on that if you're interested in part five. So. For this video, let's go ahead and start on the event tab. And I'm going to just really focus on explaining what all of the different events are and then once again what you should be focusing on early. So on the far left tab we have the story tab. Um, there are a few different types of things that will be in the story tab. One will be the special missions and there will be a daily team Bardock and there will be a daily Ginyu Force. I've talked about these in previous videos but in case you're just jumping in now, these are the key to starting a like really good starting free to play account that where you want to like manage your stones properly and not just summon on whatever b banner is there when you first start your account. So my recommendation is the earliest you can do it, maybe just focus on Team Bardock and each day collect one of the Team Bardock members. If you want to, if you can do them both, maybe do the Ginyu and the Bardock each day and just try to get both characters. But your goal would be is each day to try to get 14 copies of the unit and then as you're collecting the unit, you're going to get potential orbs along the way. What I might do is I'm going to jump into this one quick because there's a little bit of advice I need to give while we're going in here. Um, so I'm just going to pick whatever unit I get here and just hop in. Um, so the way these maps work is you have all of these nodes in the middle. Okay. Um, the left one will be normal small potential orbs, the left will be medium orbs, and the right will be large orbs. You're going to need a specific amount of each to fully max out the character. Um, I think it's pretty accessible. You could look that up online. Um, I tend to usually focus on medium orbs because you're going to get like small orbs and stuff from these nodes on top. But kind of just grab orbs and change it up periodically and eventually you'll get enough orbs. So you're collecting orbs to do the hidden potential system and you get to do it for free with these characters. Then you always want to take the cloud on the left. That cloud is going to take you up here to the top. Well, I guess I could actually be playing through it, but it'll take a while. That cloud's going to take you up to the top. You want to try to hit all of these nodes up here because they're going to have small, medium, and large orbs, and you get more orbs than you do on the bottom path. And then at the end, you'll get a battle, and you have a chance to collect an SSR, SSR copy of that unit. Um, you can get special encounters. So like on the Bardock ones, you could get the giant ape versions of them. If you get a giant ape encounter, you're guaranteed to get an SSR, SSR card. So basically, you're probably going to have to grind this like 25 to 30 times because you're not guaranteed to get a copy of the SSR and you want 14 copies of the SSR. So by the time you grind 14 copies of the SSR, if you've been like kind of mixing up what orb paths you go on and getting like an even amount of each one, um, you should have enough potential orbs to max them out. And then you just go to the star and you're done. So it's just one battle. So as long as you can beat this one battle, you want to start grinding this as fast as you can. Okay, I'm going to abandon out. And the Ginyu Force is very similar. Now, on the weekend, all five characters, so there's five characters you can farm up from this to build like a full team. And then once you build up the five characters, they give you a free LR to be the leader of the team, which is really, really awesome. Um, so you want to do this if you can the first week you're playing to get a team going. If you're playing on the weekend, you'll notice an event that has all the characters available. Um, but what it is, is you can only collect the potential orbs. You can't actually uh, take that cloud over and collect the characters. So the weekend's good for finishing up the orbs, but during the week, you want your 14 copies of the character. Now, the reason you need 14 copies is because you need to use four in the hidden potential system to unlock the dupe pass, which I talked about in the last video. And then you use the rest of the copies to raise the super attack level for free. So that's basically... Um, the reason why you want to do that okay all right so that's the main thing you want to do in the story tab early on then you'll just get like little story missions so these hero extermination plans 
Um, you're not going to be able to do these early on because they're going to require like the early stages you can do, but some of the later ones, they're going to require you to have like a specific amount of super or extreme units. You might have to have certain typings. And if you're brand, brand new, you're not going to have like a, a, enough roster to do it. I would not worry about these. Like you need to awaken some units from it, but this is an older event and it's kind of a pain in the butt to get the medals. So until you like really need to awaken a unit from these you can kind of leave these alone but you might want to go in and do some of the early stages just to get dragon stones because basically any anything in the event tab that you can complete with whatever your team looks like you want to complete it for dragon stones even if you're not like building up those characters so try to complete as many unique missions um and battles that you haven't done yet to get the dragon stones seriously again you one i talked about and then you're mainly going to have these story missions and there's going to be a uh, probably like i don't know four to five of these available at all times and they rotate and change with different um events and celebrations um once again go into these and beat as many quests as you can at the highest difficulties you can to get as many dragon stones and then many of these will have farmable characters so it can be good early on, like while you're working on the Ginyu Force and Bardock team, you can't get that full team done right away. So I would recommend if you go into a story mission and if you see characters that are farmable, you might want to try to get them and build them up. And actually, if this cooler event is up, you could actually make a full metal cooler team that actually is not not half bad because they like awaken and you could have this full metal cooler team that actually synergizes and links really well. And this is a great substitute for like the Ginyu or Bardock if you want to do it all in like one day. So if you want to go crazy and farm up, because on stage three, you can farm up like this strength um, metal cooler who would be like your free to play leader skill. So it's like wicked bloodline key two and HP attack and defense 30% which is going to be way better than that SR Goku they give you on day one. So if you like literally are brand, brand new, you could get the strength metal cooler. And then on stage four, you can basically get a bunch of metal coolers that are different typings and they technically give them different names. You can run them all on the same team and you could just have this full metal cooler free to play team running around. That would actually be a really fun team. So if you're running it and this is up, that could be a story event. You could really grind out for that. Okay. Um, the other thing that'll happen, I don't know if these ones have it. Let me see here. Uh, let me just hop in right here. Yes, okay. So some story missions, when you go in, you'll see this blue button at the top that says effect. And you'll actually get bonus drop rate if you use characters from a certain category. Now, early on, you probably won't have that luxury. But if you have any that fit into that category, try to use them because then you get boosted drop rates and, and that really helps, right? All right, back into the event tab. So story missions, try to complete them if you can. And then you might want to farm up some characters. Now, there's these that are called strike missions. You literally are going to do these once for the dragon stone and then get the hell out. <laughs> These uh, super strike units are absolutely terrible. You do not want to farm them up. Um, you, the best use for these is like to farm up super attacks of other characters. Like let's say you pull a Piccolo and you want to farm Piccolo for super attack. Then you would use this. But the drop rates are not like fantastic on these. I think you get like one awakening medal per run and then like a chance at getting a unit per run. The units are really bad. They used to be required for um, doing prime battles back in the day. But now they like have no purpose because you don't even need them for prime battle. So these strike events for you as a new player, they're literally just Dragonstone fodder. Like do them one time to get the Dragonstone and then get out. Don't don't play around with those. Um, the growth tab, there's going to be some important things in the growth tab. And I've hinted on some of these throughout some of my other videos. Um, the main thing early on is you want to do awakening medals, training in the clouds once a day, training at Korn's Tower. Um, there's a turtle school training and a Hercules world, world tournament. Those are the two best things to get like Zenny and training materials early on. They're going to be a little bit more difficult, but as soon as you get a halfway decent, like it doesn't even have to be a great team. You just need better than like that SR Goku, right? They have, like at least get some SSRs and some units built up, but you should be able to beat these. You want to do those once every day. Pan Secret Adventure, you want to start doing this as soon as you can. You get a ton of um, rank from this, which is a really, really important part of the game early on. You want to build rank because when you're building team, the cards actually have a cost to them. A lot of us older players don't even think about cost because our rank is so high, we're never going to hit that limit. But early on, you actually can't... like. 
when you first start the game, if you have all LRs and all URs, you can't actually put them all on a team because you don't have enough team cost. So it's really important that you are grinding that quest mode and you're doing this pan secret adventure because you're going to get a lot of rank experience and you want to rank up quickly. Um, the other thing is you can get an, SSS, an SSR STR pan unit that eventually, once you build up your account, you're going to be able to easy A into a very, very good LR unit. So she's actually a really good end game unit if you fully build her out. So you can only do it once a week. So as soon as you can start doing it, you want to do those missions in there. And you want to run those as soon as they pop up. These are the hidden potential events. And these will um, change every day to a certain typing. Um, you want to do these every day the moment you can start to beat them. They are actually a little tanky for a new for a brand new account. Like you're going to try need to get like if you get a Ginyu team built or a Bardock team or even that free to play cooler team, you should be able to take this out no problem. But you can't just have like random units without a proper leader. Like it's just not going to be enough. So you have to get something somewhat built up, but you want to do the, do those as soon as you can. You need that to fill out the potential system that I talked about in the last video. Uh, this Bulma's Battle Prep, this comes out before a world tournament is going to happen, which we have one coming out in like two days. Um, this is literally just to give you a ton of support items. I would run it like a couple times early to get the dragon stones but i would not make this a main focus your main focus is you need to power up characters and build your team and get dragon stones so um you need to focus on training items awakening metals uh and zenny okay this goku event this is pretty much fodder you just want to do it to get the dragon stones there is a goku you can farm up and get free to play and build up but he's like very outdated and not good so you you don't really need to farm up that goku just go ahead and do the stages once for dragon stones there um this if you're building the bardock team you want to run this like a lot because you get like free equips for the bardock team but don't make it like a huge focus right away like do it once to get your dragon stone reward and then you can like kind of leave it alone for now until you get your bardock team built up and then this is a weekly event where you get equips you want to do this once a week as soon as it pops up the challenge mode here is where dokkan events are so and there's like other like end game content so don't expect to touch a lot of this very early on it's going to be a while for you but i'm just going to go down to like dokkan events so for example if i got this SS ssr hit and you awaken him to a ur then he can go to what's called a tur by dokkan awakening you'd have to go into this event and you'd have to get the medals for him by defeating either z hard or super true stages so you definitely are going to need a more complete um, built up team with an actual leader skill to be able to beat these in the grand scheme of things these still aren't that difficult but for like a day one player it's going to be impossible to beat these you have to at least get a team now this is why the ginyu team and bardock team are so important because those teams can still beat most if not all dokkan events you might have to use items on some of them because some of the newer ones do hit kind of hard and can actually kill you even with a really good team uh, but you can always run them on z hard which is easier you just get less medals okay so Dokkan events, they're not going to be like a day one focus for you, but once, pretty much what I would suggest is once the sixth anniversary starts and you start actually pulling for banner units and you need to awaken them, as soon as you feel like you're strong enough, you want to start awakening those characters and getting that and just focus on one team and get that team fully awakened. And then you're going to be like a God. You're going to be able to take out like everything. All you need is one team. And you can take out pretty much anything in the game if you have like a really godly team, especially from the six year anniversary. Um, you're going to be able to beat anything that doesn't like gate the team out for some reason due to a restriction. Okay. Um, ultimate speed battle, you don't need to touch that. You literally get nothing from it. You can do it if you want to for fun, but it's literally pointless. Um, this punching bag machine, uh, don't even worry about that right now. I think you get a dragon stone and you don't like actually take damage. So run each level at least one time to get the dragon stone reward. But you're literally not going to be able to do this until you get a fully built team. That's more of like end game content if you want to beat that. Um, boss rush, as soon as you get one good team, you can take out all of boss rush. And here's the thing that's fantastic. There are 11 stages in here. I don't remember if the early ones give out as much, but the newer boss rushes each give out 35 stones. And if they've done it the whole way, this is 35 stones times 11, which is what? 10 stages would be 350 plus another 35. So that's a ton of dragon stones if you can complete these. And you only need like one good team to do that. 
Um, so yeah, that's something you should do as soon as you can, but it's going to take you a little build up to get there. Uh, legendary Goku event. This you need like a really good team. This is more end game content. Um, there are like missions and things you can complete. Dragon Ball history, same thing. It's end game content. You need really good teams to beat it. There are really good rewards, but you, this is more end game content. Um, these prime battles, so these will rotate. There's a Goku and a Frieza that EZA, and then there's like a bunch of other units that haven't EZA'd yet. They're really great units, but they're going to be a long ways away for you. So right now, they really shouldn't be your focus. Just focus on building up your free-to-play teams, getting ready for the six-year anniversary, and then like build up a really good six anniversary team and get them built up. Focus on that first. Then once you're like kind of out of content and you're like looking for stuff to do, then you can think about like grinding up prime battle stuff. Um, this is an even harder fighting legend Goku, so that's even more end game content. You can see there's missions I haven't even completed yet because it's so difficult. Um, <clears throat> and then this is just the pan EZA. This is going to be way later on down the road for you, so don't worry about that yet. Um, you need 130 stamina just to attempt it, so your rank is going to be too low to even attempt this. So don't worry about that right now either. And then Z battle, this is where you do most of the extreme Z battles. So this is how you awaken characters to EZA that can do it. Um, basically, all you would do is you'd go into one of these. And let's say I want to awaken this Tapia, and you're going to start on level 1. You basically just need to get past level 30. So if you get this to, say, 31, you get all the awakening medals you need. And that's where you take the characters from level 120 to 140, and they usually get like pretty godly busted after that. They get really good. So you want to EZA units when you can, if they have an EZA. Um, in an EZA event, if you go to battle info, there's going to be specific typings and categories you're going to want to try to focus on. So make sure you look at that ahead of time. This is, once again, more end game content, or you need to at least have like a, a decent built up roster that you have enough characters you can take in and actually beat these. So you will struggle with these early, but it's going to be kind of like one of those build up things where like you slowly are building up your, your account, you're getting stronger every day. As you get stronger and stronger, the harder events get easier. Once you start easy aim units and like getting really good fully built up teams, it's just going to make the rest of the game easier. So just don't jump into Dokkan as a new player and expect to do everything day one. Just take it slow, have fun with it, um, have fun building your first team and powering them up like it's so rewarding when you're doing those like Bardock units and stuff and it's like yeah I've got all these crappy SR characters I haven't even summoned on a banner and you're getting like rainbow TUR ultra rare units a full team you get a free LR to lead the team like it's gonna be amazing so just focus on that and you're gonna have a blast with that Bardock team um and, and, and do all that that way. So um, that is basically it for the event tab. So I'm going to end the video there. Um, the one thing I will throw in is there is something called Portal of Memories. So many of these events cycle in and out. They're not available every day. So if there's an event you want to do and it's not its day to be up, you can go to Portal of Memories and you can attempt them all from here. The problem is, is you need these key items, which as a brand new player, you're not going to have very many. But with the sixth anniversary starting, they're probably just going to be throwing these at you as like login bonuses and stuff. So you will end up getting these in your account without even knowing it. So um, if you need to, it's a it's a potentially something you could do, but you don't have to worry about it too early. All right, guys, thanks for, thanks for watching. Um, my next video will be part five, and it will be the last one in the series. I'm just going to do a, like a review of all of the main um, kind of things you need to do as a, as a brand new player. And then I'm going to talk about what your summoning strategy should be in the game if you want to be a very successful free-to-play player in Dokkan Battle. So thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.